situation gets better and you are you're more focused. If you sleep that hour, it gets very narrow. Why is it that, okay, like during child rearing, you have more concentration on here. If there is a family problem or other things, you, you are more in this area. When on vacations, you are more in this area. But basically, they say, try to have a balanced, a circular thing. Also, when I talk to you about the multifaceted, uh, you know, ball that I was talking about with little mirrors on it, the more you have these facets here, the more interesting you are, you age better, and you get more in touch with your passion and yourself. And you also develop different aspects of yourself. You know, you have time to uh, concerts here, games that you have here. Learn about American football. Learn about baseball. Learn about, uh, attend the games. What is happening with different things? Who's playing? You know, these are the, the, the huge opportunity we live in a culture that sports is a big thing. Maintaining close ties with friends through social media and other things, and also having some private time. Who am I? What am I doing? Kind of taking the pulse of yourself and saying, where am I in life? That is also extremely important for people to do. And why do we call nerds so narrow and, you know, have you, do you know any nerds around? <laughs> yes. They are, they are very interesting people because what they do is they have, they, they ha I always say that I, uh, we use, I used to do consulting up north in Silicon Valley. I love them. They are so pure. They are so innocent. They are just, they're like laser mind, and they're just there. You know, they, don't, they haven't done anything bad in their lives. <laughs> they just go and study them. But you know, they become very, very fragile. They become angry. Look at Steve Jobs. He was so angry. He was so uh, bitter. He, he uh, as creative and as focused and as big of contrib contribution that he gave to all of us, but personally, he, he didn't have any relationship with his kids, with his wife, and this is, this is the price, this is the price that a, a nerd pays, and uh, it becomes extremely, extremely difficult for the person to, to deal with this. Any questions here? No? Okay. Um, I haven't gone to my uh, little um, study that I was telling you about. Um, I found that I actually gave a thousand questionnaire. I got 431 back. And um, I don't want to. Um, I found what I found was very interesting that in Los Angeles, in our little culture, our culture that we have developed for the past 30 years here is very different from any Iranian culture anywhere in the world. We actually have developed a subculture here. <laughs> and this, this subculture is unique to itself. Uh, some people in Los Angeles think that, you know, how they write like new improved Coke or something, that we have new improved Persian culture here. But others also make fun of us uh, internationally that we have <laughs> sold out and we have become very shallow and all of the other things. In Los Angeles, um, I found that because whenever there is a trauma, uh, people regress. We have like uh, children, when, when the second baby is born, they become more clingy and baby-like. Whenever you, when you, when you get hurt, you become a f like a baby, like a fetal position. And when a culture gets traumatized, you regress in your culture. You become like a 50 years ago. Um, and in some ways in Los Angeles, this has happened. In families, you find that they have become more sonnati, more traditional. 
some of these people that always played uh, Western music in their home in Iran and their children played piano and you know guitar while they were during the time of Shah. Now their children are playing santur and uh, they are um, more involved in uh, Persian dancing and all of the other things. They are they do such things that you know the Nowruz has become a very big big thing here. Shabi Yalda, you know, when I lived in Iran, we didn't know Shabi Yalda and Char Shambh Suri was not that big. And here in Los Angeles, it's become a huge event, you know. Um, I was invited to a couple of things like Bandan Dozun and Hano Bandun and all of this kind of a thing that, you know, never heard of it. Um, uh, at Beverly Hills Hotel, and they give me a little Hano and it's this beautiful crystal bowl. You know, so it becomes really Los Angeles has its own brand of culture. So that, that is basically LA. Uh, that, uh, and on the other hand, the effect that we have on Los Angeles culture is huge. Uh, a friend of mine was saying that he went to pick up his kids from uh, Beverly High School, and two Korean kids were uh, having a little argument, and this one was telling the other one, Pedar Sukhde Kesafat. You know, we, so the Koreans are swearing in Persian. You know, that's the effect we have had on Beverly High. <laughs> so <laughs> so that's, uh, that's the way we go in Los Angeles. And it's, uh, and, uh, it's, uh, and, and also the way um, the culture has become to maintain the most beautiful part of the Iranian culture. There are more s classes of Molana, Hafez, Shah Paraki, uh, uh, lectures at UCLA, concerts, um, discussions here that is available to everybody than anyone else. It has also done another thing. Um, I was talking to a friend of mine who's a professor of Iranian studies, Persian and literature, and he was talking about how depressed he is. And I said, why are you so depressed? He said, you know, I am supposed to be the representative of Iranian culture, uh, literature, my university. Every day I talk about this. And then I see what's going on on television in my country with the students, with the, uh, I don't know, newspapers, thinkers, and all of that. And it pains me so much. I feel torn. And, um, and we have actually had a few suicides, as you probably know, amongst people who have been very sensitive about this issue. Um, that how could I maintain my sanity and my happiness when this is what's going on in my homeland? And he said, you know, recently I have decided that if I give in to this feeling, it would tear me apart. I would be destroyed. So I decided to do something else. I have separated my culture, my um, literature, the beauty of the poetry, and the, and the beauty of the Persian culture from what is going on and the atrocities that's going on now. And I think in Los Angeles, to some extent, we did this from the beginning of the revolution. That Iranians who came here, they decided that they are the whatever, and they decided that they are not going to, they're going to form a separate home here, and the culture is going to be a culture of uh, progressiveness and uh, uh, development. And the children have done very, very well. And also, they have maintained uh, the connection with the culture, with the literature, with the poetry, with uh, the art and the music. Um, the other thing that um, I did was I decided that um, I will give this um, questionnaire that I had to people that were above 15, that they were, uh, let, me see, let me get the that individuals who left Iran before they, after they were uh, 15 years of age, each family got one questionnaire, and that uh, they were educated and, and that, that they had resided in the United States for at least 20 years, because I wanted to know what changes they. Um, 
I found that um, it's interesting. I found that, um, and I divided this in with f people who were married to Iranian and who were not married to Iranian. I found that people who were married to Iranian were much more, especially the women, were much more involved in what was going on in Iran. I asked them, how often do you call your families in Iran? Um, of course, people who had families, mother, father, brother, sisters, they called more often. Um, and they were families. I found some people that they say it's so painful uh, that I don't call. I found a group of Iranians who are uh, graduates of, um, you know, like, uh, universities from Iran who are here on scholarship, that uh, they are very, very involved uh, with, in, with being in contact with Iran and very, very homesick because they really cannot go back. They lose their student status. And they, they were having the hardest time. Uh, they found um, they were new here. They didn't have any family, any friends. And also, they were more traditional. The Iranians here did not accept them as much as they accept each other. So um, I know a few of them, and I really find them to be absolutely a different kind of uh, Iranian, that they are bright, they are interesting, but they are not quite, uh, um, you know, that like they miss the Rosa Khuni in Iran. They miss the going to mosque and having uh, all the, everybody there, you know, and, and it's, a, it's a phenomenon that you just, the, 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 the children that are raised here, they don't relate to it, so the friendship is not there. Um, Iranians who are married to non-Iranians, especially guys who are married to American women, they basically have delegated the culture of the home is the culture of the wife, the religion of the children is the religion of the wife. Uh, they're, you know, doctors in Kansas City, in St. Louis, Missouri. Not, I'm not talking about Los Angeles. I decided to separate Los Angeles from other places. Um, my, my surveys were given in Salt Lake City, Houston, Chicago, Atlanta, Iowa City, Seattle, Ann Arbor, San Francisco. And 71% um, were from Tehran and 38% uh, from other places. Um, and 19% reported that they had been in the United States since 2008. <coughs> um, women, again, had the most contact with Iran. Students that came from um, Sharif University were the most homesick. Um, <laughs> and, and they were, they, they were very, um, they, they, they missed Iran very, very much. Um, the Baha'is, member of Baha'i faith, had most interest and were vigilantly involved with the news of Iran about their fellow believers and they traveled the least number to Iran. So that was also very interesting to find a group that cannot go back and there's, of course, there's so much persecution and problem with the Baha'is in Iran that they, they really um, have almost daily like emails and uh, from the Baha'i organization as well as their friends from all over. Um, 287 were from um, Islamic background, um, 64 reported that they could not return to Iran because of the political reasons. Um, and then they said they, are, they called themselves news junk junkies and they felt that their future was altered. Uh, it's interesting, there were, there's, there's a group of Iranians who right at the time of revolution, they were students here. Uh, in fact, one of them who, who graduated from this organization, this USC PhD, and his wife was a, my student at UCLA. Um, her name is Mehnaz Shahrara. She's a big professor of psychology at this time in Iran. They went back to Iran, 1980. And they said, well, we haven't done anything, you know. They went and they became professors there. She's very successful. Her husband, unfortunately, has been in prison a few times. 